Naxus, Purple Mountains, Ula, 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 Ula. <sighs> nope, nothing, nope. Ah, oh, books, please don't fail me now. On, I have to resist this intense Ooh, desire nope. to stroke That's a different her type yellow of ab. fur. I don't think that'd be kosher. I have to resist this intense the desire to stroke mountains. her yellow fur. Hmm. I don't think Believe that'd be to kosher. Believed to be the petrified remnants of three titan turtles that rose from. Oh, An interesting, sure, relevant, no. I've been trying to find a book, or scroll, or manuscript, or map, or torn note page, or ancient magical tome, or pamphlet, or a piece of cloth that mentions the Purple Mountains, or the Ular, but... No luck. It's really frustrating. This library has never let me down before. Bad library! There must be something here. She seems so curious about me, and I haven't asked her a single question. Enu, right? I don't feel we were properly introduced. I know you are. I mean, no, uh, yes. <clears throat> you're right. Enu. I am Enu. I hope you're staying a while. It would be so great to have someone around who's not a surly warrior with mommy issues, or a stoic leader, or a battle-hardened soldier, or just batshit insane. I mean, there's Jakai. He's pretty normal, except for his aunt issues, but he's a bit too... Ugh. Hey, so, uh, what do you do when you're not saving the world? Neural programming. I mean, I did. Then my world shut down, and now I just watch a lot of shows and eat. Uh, uh sorry. Didn't understand any of that, but it was still amazing. Tell me again? Maybe next time? I can't wait to talk more about all these things we have in common. We must have a sleepover. This is where I try to connect and make friends. You just joined the Resistance? Oh, yes. Uh, no. Not really just. About half a year ago? Wait, more than that. Time flies when you're having fun. Well, fun. Sometimes you need to make the best out of a bad situation. Right. And it's my duty. We're doing good, important work here. Also, I didn't want to end up living the life my parents wanted for me. I can identify with that. This is so nice. I wish we were sisters. Can we be sisters? You don't have to answer that. Um, do you have any siblings? I did. Uh, sort of. Long story. You? Oh, lots. Boyfriend! Do you have one of those? I do. I think. We haven't spoken in a while, and he doesn't know. I think we need to have a long talk when I... if I get back home. It's been a very tough year, for the both of us. I was asleep for a long time. I forgot a lot of the stuff that happened to me before I fell asleep. I tried to remember, but I couldn't. Until my memories caught up with me. On top of all that, I started flirting with my therapist, and now I don't even know if I should have trusted him or... Oh, Jesus. It's a long story. Very complicated. Maybe another time? Yes, uh, please? There must be something here. So, no luck? Nothing. Sorry. And I've read most of these before. I can't remember coming across any of those words you mentioned. There's not much else to do here in the evenings except read. I don't really have any female friends. It gets lonely. Anyway, I've been through all the encyclopedias and travelogues, but... Nothing about the Purple Mountains or the Ula. Nothing. I mean, the Purple Mountains sounds colloquial. It may have a different name officially, but the Ular, there should be something about them. It's a magical race? They didn't look human. Weird there's nothing about them. They must be very isolated, or... Or? Or someone's trying to hide something. Which would be weird and very hard to pull off. Forget I said that. I'm on a deadline. I should just cut this short. I guess I'll have to look elsewhere. Oh no! I'm so sorry! 
I really thought I'd find something. I feel terrible. I, do you want to be my friend? Oh, I already asked you that. I'm coming on too strong, aren't I? I am, I can tell. Stop it, Enu. No, not at all. That's... I'd love to be friends. And thank you for helping me. Much good that did. I really wish I knew who else could... For the love of the festering demon shrimps of Jaharva, do I have to do everything in this place? I didn't spend all those years living on the streets of Mercuria, pilfering food and liberating fat purses to deal with this shite. I swear I'd be better off going back to sleeping in Abnaxus's stone tree if I can't even get a mattress that isn't flea and maggot infested. Do your bleeding jobs, people. Is that too much to ask? That guy looks familiar, but I'm not quite sure where I... <gasps> Is that Blind Bob, the beggar? That guy looks familiar, but I'm not quite sure where I... <gasps> Blind Bob? Eh? What? Who's asking? Well, blessed be me straight britches. You're the last what brought me mulled wine back when I'd hit rock bottom in Mercuria. What in the name of the eight-eyed octo-god of Tartillus are you doing here? I was about to ask you the same thing. Except for, you know, uh, not... Not those words, exactly. Oh, I left me life of beggaring behind. Cleaned myself up. Joined the resistance. I'm a general now. I'm making a difference. General? Are you an actual general? Aye. See these stripes? General Bob, that's me. I takes care of the logic sticks round here, so the place don't crumble to pieces. Shepherd's busy with the strategering. Kian sorts out who to murder and how. Liko makes a fine job of being contrary. And Enu keeps everyone's spirits up. I mean, when she's not shooting Azadi soldiers in their eyeballs with her bow and arrow. Me, I make sure the ladder's stocked, the sheets are clean, relatively speaking. And that the piss pots are empty. Can't go to war on a full bladder. I just can't imagine how the blind Bob I met in Mercuria turned into this man. It's an impressive transformation. How did you end up with the rebels? Not long after you and I met, I overdosed on mulled wine. Spooked me good, that did. I figured I had two choices. Either spend the remainder of my days in the gutter, stinking of foreign spices and currants, and to be honest, there didn't seem to be a whole lot of days left. Or I could clean myself up, try to amount to something after a lifetime wasted on wine, women, and various gutters. The moment I looked up, I saw how the Azadi were running magicals out of Mercuria. I couldn't ignore it. It was disgraceful. I mean, magicals always treated me with kindness and respect. I felt I owed them. So, here I am, doing my part and paying my debts. Aside from the gambling and the bar tabs, mind you. And I feel 20 years younger to boot. He was theoretically blind, but now he can see. It makes less and less sense the more I think about it. What happened to your theoretical blindness? Cured! I was blind, theoretically, but now I can see. To be honest, some days I wonder if I ever was theoretically blind, or if it was all hypothometaphysical. You know, just in my head, like. Oh, um... It was simpler being blind Bob and resorting to beggaring and vagrancy than taking a long, hard look at myself in a speculum, particularly on account of the blindness. I wish me old pa could have lived to see me. He always believed in me, even when I didn't. To the bitter end, he told me I had potential. I nodded and wept and promised him I'd try my best. Then... As he drew his last ragged breath, I stole his purse and his breeches. Well, Pa, I'm sorry about the breeches. I'm making something of life now. Making something of myself. I'm no longer blind, Bob. Call me Bob who can see. It's a long shot, but... 
Have you heard of the Purple Mountains? Oh, I. Oh, of course. Everyone's heard of the Turtle Mountains. They're... No, sorry. Purple, not Turtle. That's what I said. Turtle. Ah. Uh... <gasps> right, of course. You don't know. Why would you? My apologies, Lassie. See, I have a serious pee deficiency. It's been a lifelong struggle. The Turtle Mountains. <laughs> nope, never heard of him. Sorry. Didn't he just mention Abnaxus? Or was that my imagination? Do you know someone called Abnaxus? Abnaxus? Now there's a name I haven't heard spoken in years. Where do you know it from? Sorry, I just overheard. Actually, I met Abnaxus recently. Well, I dreamed about Abnaxus. Or maybe it was more like a vision. This sounds crazy, I know, but... Sounds completely sane to me, lass. Abnaxus turning up in visions, hmm? That's exactly the sort of fellow he was. Persistent, unpredictable, and not a little annoying. I met him when he was the Venar ambassador to Irid. Uh, this was before the gutters, when I was still a dapper chap on the Mercurian party circuit. We hit it off, especially seeing as I was going blind, theoretically, and he saw everything. Past, present, and future. Years later, as he was leaving town, he entrusted me with the key to his home. Said to take care of it. I'd sleep there from time to time. Very uncomfortable bunk. Musty smell of ancient books and foreign weeds. I didn't much care for it, to be honest. I'm sure he said key. And what? You said something about a key to Abnaxus's house? They called it the abode back then. Abnaxus's abode. Primitive accommodations, but luxurious location. Prime real estate. Central with a garden view. Very quiet at night. And the key? D do you still have it? Sorry, this is really important. Oh, I, I carry it with me every day. After all, it is a magic key. Figured it might do me lumbago some good. W what about this house? I mean, the abode? Ah, also still there, and not hard to find. Sits right circle in the centre of the city green. Abnaxus carved it out of a petrified tree with his own morbidly huge hands. A few years ago, the authorities turned it into an historical landmark. Of course, no one can get inside on account of the Venar magic. Not without the key, at least. This key? Can I... Oh, sure. Heavier than it looks, ain't it? Hmm? More powerful than iron, worth its weight in precious stones, and then some. This magic goes back to the first magic. None of that modern hocus-pocus. You feel it in your fingers when you hold it. Tingles, don't it? It does. Sorry, I know this is asking a lot, but can I... Borrow it? Why? Why not? It's done the lumbago no good. And I don't have much use for the place, now that I've a proper bog here. But keep it safe. Abnaxus left most of his belongings behind and entrusted me with their care. I'd hate to betray that trust. I promise. I'd love to chat, lassie, but I have duties to attend to. There are piss pots that need empty, and people to command into doing it. Tell the world that blind Bob is dead, that Bob who can see has risen in his place, and that the General will repay his debts. Except the gambling debts and the bar taps. Those will never be repaid. Enu's really weird and very sweet, and I like her a lot. When I was 12, I was a lot like her. Awkward, and strike that, I'm still a lot like her. She's Zid, I believe. They're beautiful. For my next Halloween party, I'm going as Zid. Or is that racist? I 
have to resist this intense desire to stroke her yellow fur. I don't think that'd be kosher. Once blind Bob, Bob who can see, the general. Shepherd, leader of the rebels. I wouldn't want to get on her bad side. She scares me a bit. You spoke with the general. Did you find what you were looking for? It's a step in the right direction. Good. I've asked them to ready a boat for you. Whenever you're ready, it will take you into the city. I may not fully understand your role, Zoe, but there's something about you that... I've learned to have faith in the balance. The balance provides. The balance guides. It's guiding you now. You must let it take you wherever it leads, like a leaf on a river. Bend to its will. I'll try. May your gods favor your journey. You'll be in my thoughts and dreams. I hope it's not too far into town because, yeah, I've seen sturdier boats in bathtubs. Row, row, row your boat because how else will that thing make it into the city? There are fewer rebels than I thought. Having seen what they're up against, I'm worried. Shepard said to take you into town. Just get in that boat and we'll leave immediately. Now I need to find the city green. I wish Crow was with me. I feel less alone with that silly bird around. I feel better having Crow around, even though I'm not sure what he can do. Still, a useless sidekick is better than no sidekick. I, I'm not saying he's you. It's written in an alien language. I have no idea what that says. You're back. I guess the magical and your translation head's still only on. works with voice. Did you swim? Swim? No, boat. I boated. I mean, they dropped me off in a boat. Impressive. So, what's the next step on our grand adventure? Tea and biscuits? A hearty nap, perhaps? I need to find the city green and the home of Abnaxus. I visit the city green every day to clean my feathers in the fountain. Follow me. I really wish you had wings. So do I, Crow. Hey, are you okay? Sure, why wouldn't I be? I mean, April and... Of course I'm not okay, okay? But I'm okay, I'll be okay, it's okay, we're okay. Don't worry about it, okay? Okay. She's not the first friend I've lost and she won't be the last. You learn to roll with the punches. It's either that or punch back. Real hard. I don't know 
Carol have everything ready in time for this evening. Petrus invited everyone at the office to our house for dinner. Then make him cook the bloody food. So, how's business? Uh, pretty good. I mean... I must admit that I... How? I mean... How's your memory coming along? Do you remember anything about this place now? I worked so hard to remember, but... No, not much. It was winter. True. Winter changes everything, what with the snow and the ice and all. And the city looked different. Smaller. It probably has grown a bit. But no, I don't really remember anything at all. Perfectly fine. I also remember very little, but then I am a bird with a bird brain. So what can you expect? I fit right in with the locals. What's going on here? Isn't that... Are they trying to chop down Abnaxus's abode? Great. That's great. So this is it. Abode of, uh... Big, ugly thing what speaks funny? Apparently so. And there's someone else here. Apparently so. Huh. This unholy tree's been knocked down. The electric will take me seriously. They'll see I have the power to get things done. Maybe then I can stop licking the asses of the Azadi. Goddess this and goddess that. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth, sucking up to their feminine deity. Give me a world without gods and goddesses, a world ruled by humans and true Northlanders. No magicals, no supernatural women folk, no superstitious invaders. A world by and for man, with the woman in her rightful place at home. Go on, put your back into it, man. This is pathetic. It's merely a tree. I think I saw that man in town yesterday, speaking to a small crowd. What's he doing? I think I saw that man in town yesterday, speaking to a small crowd. What's he doing? Ah, a member of the voting public. Uh, I honour Hilaris Esquire to your service, madam. But uh, I'm sure I don't need to introduce myself to you. Hmm? You've seen my face in print and in public appearances. You know me as an honourable and truthful fellow who stands with the common man. And woman. Uh, we shan't forget the common woman. Yes, yes. I'm, of course, running for Commissioner of City Watch, a position sorely and desperately in need of new blood. The Watch needs strength. It needs direction. It needs humanity. In other words, it needs me. Let's see if I can get him talking about himself. He sounded more than happy to do so. It's Hilaris, right? Oh, no, Hilaris Esquire, licensed solicitor, and your candidate for Commissioner of City Watch. It's an unusual name. It's unique, certainly, but it's a Northlander name with deep roots in Mercurian society. My father, the esteemed Hubert Hilaris Esquire, served dutifully for many years on the council. He was respected, feared, and admired by all. Of course, th that was before he was beguiled by that Dolmari witch. She used her wily sorcery and beastly sensuality to lure my father away from his family. Away from... from us. 
I've sworn to restore our sacred heritage. The witches shall burn, humanity shall prevail, and the name Hilaris shall no longer be the butt of spiteful jests. He's gunning for a political position with the City Watch. I wonder what his end... He appears to be an... He's... You're running for City Watch? Indeed, the Watch is in dire need of strong male leadership in this time of dark crisis. Male? As you well know, the current commissioner, a person of the female persuasion, has failed to maintain order in the city in these dark, trying times. She's been soft on sorcery, magnanimous with magicals. She's indulged the occult, and she's extended an open hand to non-humans, acting in discord with our foreign benefactors. Oh, it's understandable she's weak, she's sentimental, She's merely a woman, and she's not been able to properly inspire the men of the Watch to take appropriate action against our occult immigrants. As soon as I'm elected, this will change. We will honor Azadi law and make Mercuria pure again. No more magic, no more magicals. And our women folk can once again return to home and hearth to be pampered and protected by their husbands fathers and brothers, as it should be, yes, yes. He appears to be an Azadi supporter. I wonder how genuine it is. I take it you're happy with the Azadi occupation? No, 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 I wouldn't call it an occupation, not anymore. The Azadi came to save us from the Tyran invaders and they stayed to protect us against all magicals. They're our benefactors, not our oppressors. But the resistance has put us all at risk. Unless we re-establish human dominion over the Northlands, we'll be vulnerable when the Azadi eventually return to Azadir. For believe me, they will. Oh, they've promised as much. This is not their land, and this is why I run for office. To build a Mercuria by and for humans, one that can stand the test of time and stand up against occult invaders, we must invest in the future. And you can't spell future without Orna Hilaris. It looks like they're trying to destroy Abnaxus's abode. Why are you trying to knock down this tree? Well, it's not just a tree. It's an affront to common decency and humanity. This so-called domicile was the dark and dangerous den of one of the most militant of magicals. An abominable beast that threatened our young and our women by its mere existence. Eradicating this occult stone tree from our historic green is not just my election promise to voters, but my God's given responsibility as a human being. Ugh, I've had enough. Well, best of luck with everything. Luck is the lazy man's excuse for failure. Luck is an occult idea. I create my own destiny, young madam, and so should you. Here's my advice to you. Find yourself a decent human husband and start breeding decent human babies. This is how you can best contribute to our common manifest destiny. And remember, a vote for honor is a vote for humanity. Is that the best you can do? Honor Hillary. Oh, I take the axe myself. An unpleasant I'm just man with an unpleasant hands. name. This, you know, dry air. Well, He's standing in the way of our mission. We must get rid of him, without murdering anyone, of course. I wish I had wings. I could just fly to the Purple Mountains. Good bird. Soft feathers. So what now? I don't know. Do you have any suggestions? We kill them, bury their bodies, and then go about our lives as if nothing happened. That's disturbing. I know. I'm dark. I'm really not in the mood for killing today. Or any day. Fine, then you come up with something. I got nothing. 
I mean, aside from murdering, but you seem to be so against that all of a sudden. Crow, could you fly over there for me? Why? Just trust me. Why? Jesus, please, Crow. Fine. Pardon me for wanting to play a role in my own destiny. I'll do it. Filthy magic! We could go get filthy drunk, forget about this whole saving the world business, and enjoy the festival of reaping like everyone else in this town! What kind of shoddy job are the Azadi doing when there are still talking birds flapping about? They should provide us with a few of their explosive sticks so that we can take matters into our own hands and eradicate this sorcerous plague. Oh, my skin crawls at the very idea of occult flying creatures within the city walls. If it wasn't for Honor's goons, I would thump that reactionary misogynist on the head. No court would convict me. It would be justified homicide. After talking to Mr. Hilleris, I want nothing more than to administer a solid beating. But I think I'll leave that for next time. That God's damn talking bird! Magical aberration! Forget my hands on the filthy feathered thing. I'll twist its scrawny little... <laughs> ah, language, language. What can I do for you, young madam? Let's play... About that talking bird that's bothering you. Yes? What about it? I just saw it. Where? Where? Go look for that goddamn bird over there. Again? Seriously? Ugh. Fine. Still, you filthy little fowl. Soft headed fool. <sighs> we'll need to carry him home to have someone look at his head. The tree can wait until tomorrow. You do the carrying. I'd do it myself, but someone needs to lead the way and keep an eye out for uh, potholes. Was brilliant. First, I did my thing, and then that goofball tried to hit me with a rock, and then stuff happened, and dung for brains got knocked out, and then they all left. End scene. It was almost like one of those puppet shows that Wizard puts on in the square. It was hilarious. I'm glad you enjoyed it. That's the most fun I've had since, since. I don't know. I guess since I hung out with April all those years ago. Locked, but I have the key. This place looks a lot bigger on the inside. It is a lot bigger on the inside. Okay, this is freaky. I feel dizzy. There must be magic here because this makes no sense. Things can't be bigger on the inside than on the outside. Then again, why should I be surprised? I've seen weirder things. Weird is my new normal. Right, so, clues. Obnaxus must have been a big believer in crystals. Or maybe this is how people light their houses. Maybe this is totally normal for Arcadia. This place has the slightly tacky ambience of a New Age shop. Those are some portentous looking books. I wish I could read them. Obnaxus was a very well-read man... thing.
There are enough musty old books here to fill a university library's special collection of musty old books. Obnaxus must have been a big believer in crystals. Or maybe this is how people light their houses. Maybe this is totally normal for Arcadia. Oh, that's interesting. Someone's here. Who's... Oh, God. I must apologize, ma'am. I didn't mean to frighten you. Zoe Castillo. You're the last person I expected to find here. I remember him from my last visit to Mercuria. Brian, right? Right. <laughs> Brian. Brian Westhouse. <laughs> we spent a few days in cramped quarters on a small airship. I'd be surprised if you didn't remember me. It's been a confusing year. For a while, I remember nothing. Even when I tried my best to remember, I couldn't. Well, not until now. I know that feeling all too well, Miss Castillo. So you're back in Mercuria, and in this place of all places. How in the name of the balance did you get inside? People have been trying for years, but this house has strong wards. Venar magic, the oldest there is. And now I understand why. It's a treasure trove. Wait, is that the Annals of Dreaming? Good God, that's a lost treasure. Only five were ever made. I'm not sure I want to tell this man absolutely everything yet. I know my way around wards. So I see. Your talents run deeper than I remember, Miss Castillo. I'm impressed. Pardon my curiosity, but what are you looking for here? Abnaxus himself vanished a decade ago. I should trust Brian. There's no point hiding anything from him. It's not that I don't trust him, but... I was just curious about what was in here. You know what they say about curiosity, Miss Castillo. It killed the cat? What? No. Uh, curiosity is the doorway to knowledge and wisdom. Looks like I picked the perfect day for a stroll in the green. I was wondering why that odorous Hillerus fellow wasn't still trying to chop this tree down. Now I know. Let's see if we find anything interesting, shall we? It's a map of the Northlands, and the border mountains are right at the top, but no purple mountains. Lots of other mountains, though. Without a reference to the purple mountains, this map won't help me much. It's a map of the Northlands. Without a reference to the purple mountains, that map won't help me. Those are some portentous looking books. I wish I could read them. Looks like a handwritten note. Hmm. This place has the slightly tacky ambience of a New Age shop. It's another one of Abnaxus's notes. This is fascinating. Amnaxus was a very well-read man, thing. All those years, and it was right here under my nose. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, said Papa Bear, before mauling Goldilocks and devouring her whole. Don't ever mess with fairy tale creatures. I 
I was right. Now I know. Mr. Westhouse, Brian. He seems very enthusiastic and friendly. Probably. I have a hard time reading him, ah. to be honest. I remember him, but only vaguely. It's like he didn't make much of an impression on me the last time. Odd, but then lots of things from my last visit here are vague and odd. He's helping me out, so I guess that's good. I couldn't do this on my own. I my magical see. reading comprehension is somewhat lacking. I'll make a note Still, of that. I wish I could do it without him. Have you found anything of interest? Keep looking. This place is a treasure trove. What do you think this means? Hmm. I'm not sure there's much to learn from that one. Here's another note. On the matter of the kin and the approaching war of the balance... <laughs> By Jove, this is the information we've been looking for! I can't believe it was right here all this time! Your help has been invaluable, Zoe. I'm in your debt. What do you think this means? Hmm. I'm not sure there's much to learn from that one. This looks interesting. The first dreamer references in the annals of dreaming. Uh, that's this book right here. And the chapter about the first dream. It's certainly a starting point. Let's see what it says. Can you read that book? I've lived in Arcadia for decades, and there hasn't been much to do aside from studying ancient texts, so yes, I can read this book. Let's see, the chapter in question speaks of the Ular. They are said to be wardens of the Dreaming One, whatever that means. It's a rough translation, the English language isn't quite up to the task. The Ular and the Yete, one people that split into two, that sounds familiar. It says here the Yete left the Purple Mountains to go south to burrow into the ground something about a well of dreams. I mean, I don't know how much of this is true and how much is fantasy or prophecy. It's... Uh, a difficult book to decipher. There's also something about two dreamers becoming one. It's vague. This is almost certainly a prophecy of some sort. The Ular live on Cloud Peak. It's in the mountains of Yedra. Where's that on the map? Ah, there it is. Straight north across the plains, right in the middle of the border mountains. This is an old book, so I don't know if they still live there. I've never heard of the Ular. They might all be dead. I'm sure Obnaxus won't mind me borrowing this. I'll return it to him in person, if I make it to Cloud Peak. That note fell out of the annals when Westhouse turned the pages. That note fell out of, of the, the annals balance. when Westhouse turned the pages. Finally, something concrete. Obnoxus left so much behind. There's a wealth of information here. Let's see. Let's see. There. Cloud Peak. This is it. This shows the way... Westhouse might be able to decipher that note. I can't note. wait to tell note. them. Looks like a handwritten note. It's another one of Abnaxus's notes. Westhouse might be able to decipher that note. Ah. 
Ah, uh, I knew it! I knew it! Fascinating. Notes. Notes everywhere. This note fell out from the pages of the annals. What's a soulless stone? I'm not sure. The soul stone was taken from Luke's by the warlock Clax. It must be retrieved or the past, present, and future will cease to be. That sounds ominous. It does indeed. I don't know about any soul stone, but I'm guessing this Clax fellow does. I wonder if Abnaxus means old Roper Clax. April told me his story. He was a two-bit wizard who resided in a floating castle up north near the border mountains. April said she taught him a lesson. She didn't get into any details, but he lost his castle. Last I heard, he's doing children's theater here in town. Reformed, apparently, if that's a thing a wizard is capable of. Sounds like this soul stone is important. If you see anything that looks relevant, let me know. I can probably decipher it for you. Mr. Westhouse, Brian. He seems very enthusiastic and friendly. Probably. I have a hard time reading him, to be honest. I should get going. Should we...? Would you mind terribly if I stayed here to read these books? Well, this is... it's private property, isn't it? Obnoxus isn't coming back, and I've been itching for a chance to peruse his library for years now. I promise I won't remove anything or make a mess. He might have the best of intentions, but I made a promise to blind Bob. I'd feel awful if anything happened to Obnoxus's abode. I'm sorry, I don't think I can let you stay in here. I'm not sure I need your permission. I... Only joking. <laughs> I understand. I'll take my leave now, Miss Castillo. I certainly hope we'll see each other again soon. Didn't you say something about a wizard and a puppet show? Nope. No, you did. You said something about a show in the square. I did not. Crow. Oh, right, right! Roper Clax's Fingerlings! Man, that show's great. A modern classic. Clax. He's the wizard April Ryan fought. That's right. He was behaving badly, so she fought him and trapped him inside some sort of calculating machine. Pretty clever stuff. Where can I find this puppet show? I'll show you. It's connected to the pipes. Looks steampunky, very retro future. I can't even begin to guess what they're for. Shiny Asadi mach- These pipes are everywhere. I'm sure they weren't here the last time around.
I feel better having Crow around, even though I'm not sure what he can do. Still, a useless sidekick is better than no sidekick. I, I'm not saying he's useless. Roper clacks, I presume. He looks wizardly, as in how I expected wizards to look when I was ten. I should probably go talk to Mr. Clax before his next show begins. If you seek an autograph, you must purchase my book first. It's on sale today, only- No, sorry. I, I need to talk to you. Talk, hmm? Well, I only have a few minutes before my show begins, but I'm sure I can spare a couple of them for a pretty young thing like you. This has to be the right man. You are Roper Clax, right? The wizard? Who told you that? Well, that sign, for one. No, the, the wizard part. Who told you? I mean, I'm merely a humble finger puppeteer trying to make an honest living in a cold and heartless world. <laughs> but you were a wizard once. Fully rehabilitated, I don't go anywhere near sorcery, not anymore. You should really read my highly acclaimed and best-selling memoir, A Farewell to My Wizarding Ways. It's a thrilling story of redemption and romance, of dashing heroes and wicked villainesses, of flying castles and curious calculating devices. Every word of it as true as the night is dark and the day is bright, of course. <laughs> It's an odd name for a children's puppet show. The Fingerlings. Ah, my beloved finger puppets, beloved by all children and critics alike. Gilbert Grutton of the Daily Mercurian called my show simply astonishing and wrote that it was quite impossible to look away. I couldn't believe my eyes and like a slow motion cart wreck. You see, the fingerlings represent a revolution in finger puppeteering, or as I call it, fingering, uh, trademark and patent pending. The women in particular are quite ecstatic about it. Stay for the show. I guarantee a good time. Didn't he and April have some sort of confrontation? Do you remember April Ryan? April Ryan? Oh, yes, of course, absolutely, certainly, naturally, the bit... <clears throat> the brave young woman who came to my castle and stole it and helped me put my sorceress past behind me. How could I possibly forget? He's obviously got some issues with April. I'd be curious to learn more. So, about April. Why, why does everyone want to talk about April Ryan? She was just a weak little human who stumbled onto things she didn't... <clears throat> no, 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 I must apologize. You see, April and I had some disagreements in the past. I'm past that now. I'm a different person. <laughs> As for April Ryan, I hear she suffered an ignoble death at the hands of our Azali benefactors. What a shame. What a terrible, terrible shame. <laughs> I might as well get right to it, seeing as his show is about to begin. Do you recall owning a soul stone? A soul stone? I... I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was just wondering, since there are so many impressive tales about your powers where I come from. And where would that be? Um... That was a long time ago. In another life, I've moved on. I'm a different person now in every way. I was just wondering what happened to the stone. She took it, that bitch. Balance, pardon me, I don't know where that came from. Who? 
Yaga, the wicked witch of the north, as these simpletons call her. As if they have any idea who and what she truly is. She lurks in Riverwood in the dark places she feeds on that stone like a... <laughs> like I said, that's in the past and I've left it all behind long ago. Now I make an honest living bringing joy to children through my most excellent and revolutionary finger puppet theatre. And on that note, I must beg your pardon, young miss. The show is about to begin. <laughs> Can we please talk again afterwards? I have some more questions. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. After the show. After the show. Yes, 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 yes. Toodaloo! Yes, here we go. This is gonna be so good. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, humans and... Well, humans. And you, Azadi soldier standing over there, you're welcome to watch. Just don't rattle your sabers or rustle your suits. Uh, welcome to this morning's performance of... The Fingerlings. Uh, I am your host and puppeteer, Rupa Klax, esteemed thespian and raconteur, author and entrepreneur. My book is available for purchase with a free, personalized dedication. Speak to me after the show. A donation is both appreciated and expected. Drop your coins into the box after the show. Remember that every iron piece goes towards a good purpose. Woohoo! <laughs> Go fingerlings! My beloved fingerlings, uncrafted reproductions of renowned actors from across Arcadia, immortalized in finger puppet form by skilled artisans. Using only the finest fabrics and natural materials, these lovely creatures are as dear to me as children and as talented and protean as the finest human players. You're all welcome to approach the stage after the show, of course, to admire my finely crafted miniatures up close and intimately. No food, no touching, no children. And now, beloved audience, prepare yourselves for a journey into mystery for a true story of wizardry and magic. I present to you the tale of the good-hearted wizard and the villainous winch. Once upon a time in the distant north, there lived a kindly old wizard in a wonderful flying castle. This very friendly wizard liked to tease and toy with the people of the land, and sometimes he would do silly things like uh, turn them into stone or furry animals and bottle up the wind. <laughs> Naturally, he meant no harm, and the people of the land love the wizard like they would a grandfather, a very young and very, very handsome grandfather. But one day, an evil sorceress from a distant land came to visit the kindly wizard. This ugly, selfish witch didn't understand that the wizard was only trying to make people happy. She used her dark sorcery to steal all of his possessions and trap him inside a tiny little box where the gentle wizard was barely able to breathe. The poor old man was trapped for many moons inside this box before a benevolent wandering god arrived to